Here, we play games and stuff. I don't know if you heard about that. Did you ever hear that there's actually content creators on the internet who make a living not being complete jackasses of themselves? You heard about that, right? Like, you don't have to completely embarrass yourself and turn yourself into a laughing stock in order to make a living on the internet. I don't know if you heard about this. You can actually, like, put out quality content. But it's hard. See, that's the problem. Is that it's actually difficult to do that. It's very difficult to entertain an audience in a positive manner every day. You know what I'm saying? I could go for the, the lowest common denominator, but I'm not. I'm doing the hard thing. I'm doing the tougher thing. Before we get into this, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who's watched and liked and commented and subscribed and all the rest of it on the last video. The outpouring of, dare I say, positivity has been absolutely mental and the fact that I've had people commenting saying they've learnt stuff and they're going to take advice into their own streaming careers is just and yeah, I'm, I'm... I know, because I'm looking that way which is where my, my notebook is, but the chat's over here. I don't want to block it, so. Oh, wait, um, Forbidden Math. Forbidden Math has, 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 their, um, has their chat on, on that side. So, yeah, okay, right, I'll, I'll use theirs. I'll use their version. This is much better now. This is much better now. Oh, Thanks, Sam. I'm so subtle, you might not have even noticed. Watch your brain, dude. Fantastic Mr. Sam. He is one of the OG streamers that got me into streaming. He put a video out and part of the video was him explaining a couple of things, just a few tips. And one of them was that when your camera is facing away from the game that you're playing, it just looks like you're disconnected from the stream. So for my um, for my play scene, which is the main one that I use whenever I'm playing a game, if I'm looking straight at my monitor now. It should look ever so slightly like I'm looking in the direction of the game. So. That Mr. Sam video is probably one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite pieces of content I've ever seen. Pretty overwhelmed, but also thank you everybody to that's that's you know that's uh, interacted in some way. You're all brilliant, and and thank you. And yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> Hopefully, I can keep this going and and. We'll see. We'll see. See what you think of this one. Cheers. I started writing the script for this episode around two thirds of the way through my last video on DSP. I'm going to be honest with you guys now. I have no idea what that was. Sorry. DSP. I'm going to be honest with you now. I realised I kept saying the word content and watching clips of Phil and he'd be saying my content this, my content that and it got me thinking, is he a content creator? If you're not sure who Phil is or why I'm suddenly talking about him now, I'd suggest watching my last video which started life as a short streamer tips video and ended up as a sort of mix of that and a DSP for beginners video essay. And the reason I made it? Well, I just wanted something to make, edit in practice really. Plus. It was a really good way of transitioning from occasional streamer and very occasional YouTuber to something more substantial and planned out. And what it also was, was content. And as opposed to streaming most of the time, it was content that I was content with. Ah, the English language. As an aside, and, and just to get this out of the way, I've always hated the word content when it's used in this context of making YouTube videos and things like that. Ever since I first heard it, I think uttered by Jack Packard from Red Letter Media, I found it cringy. Because it's not so bad it's good. It's boring. It's very boring. But as a, as a creator of content, it's fascinating how it all came about. But not fascinating enough where I'd recommend it to anyone else. I tried giving my thoughts on it in a live stream a couple of months ago, and at the time I just couldn't find the right words to explain why. At least one person in my chat was on my wavelength, and I think the best thing we could come up with was that it sounded douchey. To me, it sounds almost cynical. You don't make videos, you create content. Like the videos themselves aren't what's important, just the fact that you've made something for people to click on. Oh and hopefully you can't tell but this me is actually a reshoot. I fucked up 
or I got something factually incorrect or I just didn't convey something in the way that I originally wanted to but in a way that's actually not a bad thing it serves to highlight that making this stuff isn't easy and it takes time, effort, patience and dedication which is also good because as much as I don't like the word content also implies substance, value and a thought process which I guess leads us nicely on to DSP Firstly, I do apologise if some of this is repeated from the first video, but we're going to go into a little more detail here. So let's break down a typical DSP stream. The pre-pre stream. Here we'll have the fan art slideshow cycling, but with fan-made remixes playing over the top, which have voice clips over music of varying quality. This is the part where most streamers would have their starting soon screen. During this time Phil will actually join in with his stream chat and I checked out a few examples from Raw DSP and this can actually be anywhere up to about 20 minutes so good start. The pre-stream. Fan art, Phil talking, no background music and no webcam. These days this can last anywhere up to about an hour. Typically there'll be a couple of topics covered and then on to a always the same it might as well be scripted pledge for contributions or begment as it's more commonly known amongst detractor circles. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm an independent, independent content, content creator. creator. I rely on crowdfunding to make a living. I don't have any sponsorships, partnerships, channel members, super, super chat, super sticker, gunner glasses, half vest, bill, tips. There may be the odd time where he'll admonish or belittle one of his viewers by switching on his webcam for a patented full screen. No! But other than that, what we've got here is some fan made pictures and a bloke talking. Oh wait, he's doing full screen webcam pre streams now, isn't he? Fuck you and your mother. Really. Fuck you and your mother. Well, that's something, I guess. Gameplay. Number one. The leaderboard, the tip and super chat notifications, the webcam and the little blue or... Is it red swirly whirly thing that borders his webcam? Remember that giant error in judgment I made nine years ago and apologized for multiple times over the years? Well, let's bring it up again. How about fuck you and your mother? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Merry Christmas, bitch. Which doesn't loot properly now that I'm looking at it. Anyway, as a viewer, this is presumably the reason you're here. But wait, what's that? Let's back up a second. This section usually starts with Phil starting up his game because, as any streamer will tell you, you can't start your game until you're live and you've got an audience watching. What, what even is preparedness? So while he's waiting for his game to boot up, he'll maybe talk to his chat and read out any leftover contribution messages. And then this happens. He looks over at his computer screen, clicks on something, and turns to camera. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my playthrough of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, the Definitive Edition Remaster. We didn't go into this last time, but DSP's gameplay, and for the most part his pre-streams, will be recorded, presumably by OBS, and consciously cut into segments on the fly while he's streaming. As in, he'll start the recording, introduce himself and the game as though it's a YouTube video, play the game for an hour or so, then he'll stop the recording until he's ready to start up for the next one. Is it just me or is this not fucking weird? Now recording your stream is pretty common practice for those with the hard drive space and a view to creating content out of their streams after the stream is over. However to my mind the standard thing to do for most streamers is to firstly stream and record the whole thing then take your recording and edit it down for your YouTube or social media platforms later on. Now there will be a few sections of a DSP stream that you won't see included on most of his uploads and I bet you can't guess what sections they are. I don't know what is going on today with support but before I went on my break on Monday, things were great. Today, I come back. We didn't hit even get close to the tips goal on the first stream, and now we have $5 in tips tonight. Uh, this is not good. I say most because there will be the odd occasion he'll leave one of these in for his upload. Either because he accidentally started begging before he stopped the recording, or he considers himself to be in a bad enough financial situation to warrant leaving it in. I don't know, does nobody else find this to be a bit disingenuous towards his live viewing audience? I know there's people out there that do it. I mean, for instance, an ASMR streamer might say, I'm going to do a recording for a video tonight, and then do an hour or so of a certain trigger and put that out as a YouTube video. But Phil does this every stream, 
This is just part of his twice daily routine, and it's also the core of his so-called content. Live streamed gaming videos that are manually edited on the fly, that are masquerading as YouTube playthroughs. It's unique, it's raw, and it's completely fucking baffling. Break time. Then we're treated to our old friends, the fan art and the remixes. For anywhere in the region of 20 to 30 minutes, not a be right back or a break screen in sight. Well, actually I tell a lie, there is an on break piece of fan video that plays regardless of whether we're on the pre-pre-stream, the pre-stream or on a break. It's just thrown in there with his regular rotation of fan art. This is the care and attention level we're dealing with here, the I really don't give a fuck about anything care and attention level. And I'm not saying you shouldn't take breaks, but 20 to 30 minutes, that's kind of bordering on stream ending and restarting territory, is it not? Gameplay. Number two. Now we're onto the home stretch, another couple of hours of fun and games with Phil. No, fuck you and your mother. I'm just gonna fucking beat this shit quick now. Now I'm pissed. Fucking stupid game. Yeah, again. This is the end. Then we end strongly with a quick sign off to his YouTube audience. Thanks. Peace out. See you later. Alright guys. Then depending on whether or not the contributions were deemed adequate, he'll either give a quick thumbs up and hurriedly leave, or some more of this. Again, thanks to those who chilled with me. I mean, this, I mean, no exaggeration, this is the absolute worst support stream I've probably had in a year, if not more. I can't remember a stream where I made like $7 in tips and $16 super chats or cheers. Uh, but what can I do? I can't change it. There's nothing I can do about it. I wasn't going to stop and tweet. I, I already had done that. During Mass Effect streams, it had no effect. So, it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> it's literally the worst stream I've had in a long time. Kimbo Slice, you came on here about a half an hour ago. You said you couldn't tip. During, immediately when you did that, I did a big elaborate explanation on this very stream explaining what was going on and why you couldn't tip. And then you never tipped. So I said, gee, I guess Kim, Kimbo Slice was kind of messing with me because he didn't tip, even though I explained in detail how to do it. All right? So, what are you talking about? Did you tip? No. So, I have a right to say facts on my stream. Just so you know. Finally, the stream ending screen will pop up with some nice music and a list of all of his social... Oh, wait. No. Sorry. No music, though, so... Every cloud. I guess the point that I'm trying to get across here is that a DSP stream is exactly the same every time you watch one. Same sections, same webcam, same music and same fan art. You know how some streamers will have a really epic moment or something funny and unpredictable happens and everyone clamours to be the first one that says clipped it and then the streamer grabs the clip and posts it on their social media for fun? Well there's none of that here. The only unpredictable thing that will happen is how badly he'll scold someone in chat for talking about the wrong thing or how long his next pause and controller down rant will be. You know, the stuff that detractors will use in their latest lame brain conspiracy theory videos. So substance, value and a thought process. It goes without saying that I really don't see that from someone just uploading all of their stream footage almost entirely, regardless of how many parts it's uploaded in. If we were asking if DSP was a content creator back in the early 2010s, I'd say the answer would be much more clear. Yes, he was a little more crass and a little less of the mature adult that he is now, but while his mentality towards gameplay content was generally the same, there were bigger aspirations involved. There were vacation and house moving vlogs, or what Meerkat Inc likes to refer to as his born identity shaky cam period. There were compilations and reviews and whatever this is. When you are 45 years old, you'll still live with your mom, Mr. Troll. Speaking of your mom, tell her I'll be unavailable next week as I'm taking time off. Oh yeah, she still owes me for last night. Oh yeah edited videos with clear thought put into them, but editing is pretty famously something that Phil struggles with. Need I remind you of his high level editing rant from the last video? I don't have that know-how, 
I never did. I was just this Joe Schmo nobody making silly videos. I'm the average guy playing games. That's what it was supposed to be. From what I can gather, around mid-2017 to early 2018 seems to be the point where he finally stopped even attempting it. It's certainly the period where he lost his motivation for it. The point where YouTuber Phil ended and professional full-time streamer Phil began. And we know this because, unsurprisingly, Phil talks about it a lot. Did you know that Phil likes to talk about himself? I'd liken it to hearing Paul McCartney telling the same story for 50 years about how he wrote Hey Jude or how John wrote Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. You already know the story, you know exactly how he's going to tell it, but he's going to tell it anyway. I say the movement you need is on your shoulder, and I was playing the song to John. The movement you need is on your shoulder. The movement you need is on your shoulder. I said I'll be taking that out, you know. I said I'll be changing that. I'll fix that, I'll fix that. That's what it, I just put it, it's just words, it doesn't mean anything. The movement you need is on your shoulder, sounds like a parrot. Sounds like a parrot. Sounds like a parrot. But John said no, you won't be taking that out. You won't, you know. He said, you won't, you know. He said, I know what it means. He said, I know what it means. He said, I know what it means. That's incredible, line. It's the best line in it, man. He said, that's probably the best line in it, man. He said, that's the best line in the song, you know. What? Twitch, earlier this year, kicked me out of their partner program with no justification for it. The difference is, one of them's a Beatle and the other one is a bloke in his pajamas playing computer games. Anyway, he'd had some success with a couple of game reviews that did exceptionally well for him. Notably, an edited review on his KO gaming channel entitled The Worst Game I've Ever Played, Homefront the Revolution is easily one of the most viewed things he's ever put out. This is the worst game I've ever played, stay the fuck away from me. <sighs> But I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that YouTube adpocalypse aside, the reason he's not doing this stuff anymore probably has something to do with the effort to profit ratio. I mean, why spend hours editing a single game review that may or may not be a hit with the YouTube algorithm lottery, when you can sit on a stream twice a day, make money while you stream, and upload each stream into two or three separate videos? Even if I worked my ass off, um, I still wouldn't make money. The pr proof of the pudding here is 2016, I worked my ass off to make a new channel called KO Gaming Takeoff on YouTube. It did. I had a video with over a million views. I had videos with tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of views on the channel. All right. And it was doing good. And then in early 2017, the YouTube adpocalypse hit. Okay. Boom. Everyone stopped making a lot of money on YouTube all at once. And when that happened, I really had to refocus my efforts to be more of a streamer than anything else. And I will never put effort into YouTube ever again. Why bother? No, I can't keep doing DSP tries it when the money that the video makes doesn't even cover the item I'm reviewing. It's that simple. You know, I do th plenty of things for fun. So what I need to do is I need to choose the things that I can do for fun that will also be profitable so I could keep doing things and having fun. Or else this whole thing ends. If I just do whatever I want willy nilly and I don't care about money, guess what? This all goes away. No more streams, no more YouTube, it all just dies out because that's reality. There is a certain amount of pride you have when you release a highly edited game review, right? And then you get a ton of people watching it, people leaving positive comments saying, wow, this is a well done video, and people who either agree or disagree in the comments and start an intelligent discussion. That's really awesome. The problem is the era of that on YouTube and being, and being profitable is pretty much dead. Unless you're already an established person who does it for a living, you know, I'm talking about like the Angry Joes. Angry Joe, Angry Joe. The Angry Joe scenario. I think it was Angry Joe. Everyone else is fucked. You can't do it. It's just not, you know, it was too much time and effort for nothing. So I'd rather be a streamer and have fun with you guys enjoying games on a daily basis than put time and effort into something that isn't going to be profitable because YouTube fucked up their website, you know? Yeah. It's not like artistic integrity, forward thinking, or, you know, trying to win over new viewers is a thing. The most startling thing I notice whenever you see something new from this guy is that every single piece of Phil Bennell content that you click on will be filmed through this webcam, in this room, against this wall, unless he's doing some kind of unboxing where he'll go to the effort of turning the camera to show his dusty entertainment centre. And it'll have originated from a live stream. From what I can determine, the last time we saw any deviation to this formula was actually almost exactly three years to the day as of the recording of this video. Salt! That's all you taste is salt! Nothing he now uploads to YouTube hasn't already been seen by his live audience. Annoyingly, this has been true up until very, very recently as he's been releasing short emergency support my content content like this. 
Okay, what's up everyone? Phil here with an impromptu and very quick video to kind of clarify a situation that has happened today here on my YouTube channel, DSP Gaming. What I need from you is buy-in that you will support that playthrough now. So, please like the videos, like the videos, please leave comments on the videos, comment on the videos, and please support the playthrough via other means. Do whatever you can if you can support, and please support it if you can, whether you can tip or Patreon pledge, whatever it may be. All that stuff helps me tremendously. Please consider it, okay guys? Which brings me on to my next point. Darkside Phil is caught between two lives. The life of a streamer that just streams and focuses on that solely as the primary source of income. This is what he now defines himself as, and I mean, he will go out of his way to make sure that you know that. Then we have his other life as a YouTuber, which he always seems keen to distance himself from these days, but it's just something that he's never been able to fully let go. Even without the ad revenue he used to receive, his obsessive uploading and numbering of each playthrough segment continues to this day. Except now they originate from streams instead of being produced in a more traditional offline let's play style. And I say he's been keen to distance himself from this life, however he's now streaming there again and all of his content is now contained within a single service. So unsurprisingly he's flip flopped back to doing everything he can to convince people that the videos he puts out are meaningful content that thousands of on demand viewers appreciate because he's this honest transparent guy. Which I'm sure is probably true for a handful of people but if his stuff was truly worth watching then surely there'd be more people watching it. It's content that I feel good about. I feel like what I put out, out on the internet on a daily basis is genuine. 13 years ago, I found a, 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 an avenue to share my love for and passion for video games with the world. Is meaningful <laughs> and entertaining. As long as I hit those three, I feel uh, like I'm doing my job, right? And that's my job. It's literally my job to put that content out for free. And how amazing and, th and how thankful I am that I'm able to make a living doing that. However, this really depends on what day you ask him and what narrative he's currently spinning. Sometimes his videos are described in the way I just mentioned and other times his entire YouTube channel is just an archive of raw unedited playthroughs. Um, I just stopped caring and now YouTube is literally just a cut paste archive of my, my streams here on Twitch and it's not worth it to put effort into YouTube anymore. But if the latter was true then why segment it? And why censor the short sections you don't want people to see? Why are the segments that you don't want your YouTube audience to see okay for your live audience to see? I cheekily asked the question in a Peace of Peace live stream recently and the chat had some interestingly differing opinions. We'll do red, platinum, denim and gold. Usually the top four. And the answer that Piece of Peace gives here pretty much sums up my thoughts. As for your, your question. What is up, Chris B? Good uh, to see you here today. Fantastic, Mr. Sam. Reminder, I'm streaming till 4.30. I'm streaming an extra half an hour. I mean, I wouldn't consider him guys. one, but awesome. I don't know if the um, conventional so. definition would make him one. If he is a content creator, he certainly is not a good content oh, there creator. He is. I was gonna say, the content I make is basically, I'm, I'm ex I have something to say, I guess, and I'm expressing it. That's, that's what content creation is doing. Like, whether it's a video or streaming. So, I guess ultimately the question is, does Phil have anything to say? Other than... Um... Now guys, we're at uh, $26 in tips. It's been three hours. Um, this is not good. So I guess he has something to say in the sense that he begs. Level but, three, uh, yeah, we get another building. Outside of that, it's just uh, blocking clock out for him. More, more enemies coming. The simple answer is, he puts stuff out on the internet. He's a content creator. So is that all it takes? Does that also mean that your old work colleague that only posts cat videos on Facebook is also a content creator? Or is the key in the repetition? As I said earlier, Phil likes to legitimise what he does by referring to his raw daily uploads as content. But can content be considered content if it's just the same thing every time? You could argue, I would argue, that at the point a DSP livestream becomes segmented sections of a game playthrough and archived on YouTube, it becomes content. And it seems pretty clear that Phil is conscious of and at least somewhat considerate of this to some degree, but for the most part he's not bothered about the quality of the product that he puts out for his YouTube videos and almost never has been. 
and I don't know if I was Phil I'd be pretty discontented about referring to the stuff that I put out as content so is Darkseid Phil a content creator? Thanks guys, I just wanted to say I've got a couple of ideas for new videos which are basically just titles at this point. One of which involves me just fixing an entire DSP stream. Would that even be possible? Would it be something you would watch? Let me know. <laughs> Cheers. You know exactly how he's going to tell it. Oh fuck. Might I spend hours editing a single game blah, blah, blah. up until very very recently. Is it, blah, blah. Can you say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm an independent content creator. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm an independent, I think, creator.